Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Canto Two, chapter six, verse number twenty-four and twenty-five. Teshu yagyasya pasava. That's twenty-four. I'm reading from. Okay, we'll do twenty-five. Vastunyo sadaya sneha Rasaloha mirdo jalam Arko yagyumsi samani Chatter hotram chasatama Vastunyo sadaya sneha Rasaloha mirdo jalam Archo yam yusi samani Chatter hotram chitas chasatama Vastun yosa dayas neha Rasaloha mirdo jalam 
Arko Yam Yajum Si Samani Chatter Hodram Chasatama Vastuni, utensils, osadaya, grains, sneha, clarified butter. Interesting translation for sneha, huh? clarified butter. That's a girl's name, right? It's nice, sneha. We can call her now Ghee instead of <laughs> sneha. <laughs> Bhaktin Ki, <laughs> Ki Dasi, <laughs> Rasa Loha Mirdam, Honey, Gold and Earth, Jalam, Water, Richa, The Rig Veda, Yajumsi, The Yajur Veda, Samani, The Sama Veda, Chatter Hotram, four persons conducting the performance. Cha, all these. Satama, almost pious one. Okay, we'll read verse 24 first. For performing sacrificial ceremonies, one requires sacrificial ingredients such as flowers, leaves, and straw, along with the sacrificial altar and a suitable time, springtime. <clears throat> 25. Other requirements are utensils, grains, clarified butter, honey, gold, earth, water, the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, and Sama Veda, and four priests to perform the sacrifice. Srila Prabhupada's very short purport. To perform a sacrifice successfully, at least four expert priests are needed. One who can offer hota, one who can chant udgata, one who can kindle the sacrificial fire without the aid of a separate fire, adar ad advarya, and one who can supervise Brahma. Such sacrifices were conducted from the birth of Brahma, the first living creature and were carried on till the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira. But such expert Brahmana priests are very rare in this age of corruption and quarrel, and therefore in the present age, only the yagya of chanting the holy name of the Lord is recommended. The scriptures enjoyed, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Keva Lom, Kalom Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Gatir Anyata. Om Vajyan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha 
Yama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Vebacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So all of these costly Vedic sacrifices are very difficult to perform in this age. And because the requirements needed are not available, and that is the expert priests to chant the mantras accordingly. Any deviation in the chanting, even a slight mispronunciation of the Sanskrit, will cause the, the sacrifice either to be null and void or may produce a different results from the sacrifice. We have the example in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the sixth canto, or uh, I think it was the son of, it was Twasta, the son of, maybe it was son of Twasta or Twasta. Uh, he was um, killed by Indra because he had been commissioned by the demigods to perform sacrifice for, on behalf of the demigods. But he also had inclination towards the demons, and so he was performing sacrifice for both. And then when Indra fell off, um, uh, he cut off his heads, three of them, I think he had three heads. And uh, his son became very angry, and so he wanted to get back at Indra. So he wanted to perform a sacrifice to produce a demon that would kill Indra. And he began to chant the mantras. But as described, he chanted, instead of a, 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 a long A, he chanted a short A. In other words, he without putting the emphasis. And rather than getting a demon to kill Indra, he got a demon that was going to be killed by Indra. And that was the story of Vritasura. Yeah. So, yeah, we can see how precise these uh, chanting of the mantras are. One time, Srila Prabhupada, he, think he was in a place called Nellore in South India, I think somewhere in India anyway. And uh, he had come to this very prestigious house, and the lady of the house, she was quite an important person, very prestigious. And she had a lot of followings, she had uh, money. So she arranged an elaborate sacrifice for Srila Prabhupada to perform for her deities, and she got all the ingredients. Prabhupada didn't even know this was going to happen, but this was going to be her surprise for Prabhupada. So she made all these nice arrangements. Prabhupada's disciples were there, and then Prabhupada came, and then he saw what was about to happen. So she said, so of course, she said, oh, Swamiji, we want to have this wonderful sacrifice to install my, the deities, and I want you to preside over the sacrifice. So, <laughs> so Prabhupada, you know Prabhupada, he's not any, anybody's servant. <laughs> you have to serve him. So he, uh, he, he said, all right. So he stood in front of the deities and said, give me a conch shell and some milk. And then he, uh, and they were going to get in you know, all the chanting of all the mantras, and there were priests there, and there were they all, these, all these hired priests nicely dressed. And Prabhupada said, Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Poured the milk out and said, Didi is installed. <laughs> No, no, Swamiji, Didi is installed. <laughs> that was the end of that. <laughs> Prabhupada could deflate your false ego really fast. <laughs>
because he was thinking, oh, I'm gonna, it's going to look good, you know, with all these people around, and I'll be important. My deities get installed, and this big Swami's coming to do it, and Hari Bo, and I'll be even more popular. <laughs> Prabhupada could see through the whole thing. So he just, yeah, deities installed. When Prabhupada writes, he writes in the Srimad Bhagavatam that in Vrindavan, when we were opening the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan, he said, I knew all we should do, or could do, and would do, and would be sufficient, is simply have kirtan, that's all. Have kirtan around the deities for, his, for many hours, and that would be just as any good as any kind of yagya for installation. But he said, I didn't do that because the, the priest and the brahmins and the uh, different mats in Vrindavan would not accept our movement as bona fide. So therefore, I went through this elaborate sacrifice with priests and various things. And Prabhupada was just sitting there waiting for it to get over, you know. <laughs> as soon as it was over, he said, have kirtan. <laughs> so we can see, and it's here it's nicely mentioned, how important it is that the holy name of the Lord is the panacea for all activities in this age. It's the medicine for all ills. It, it is the, the way to perform any kinds of yogis. One who is chanting the holy names of the Lord and has developed a taste for chanting is on the highest spiritual platform simply by that activity. Krishna's name has manifested himself in his name and Lord Chaitanya has delivered that name personally in order for us to ultimately achieve the highest perfection of spiritual life simply through this process of Harinam Sankirtan. So that's why our movement is successful. When uh, Srila Prabhupada was taking initiation, this is his sannyasa initiation, Keshava Maharaj in, uh, in uh, I think it was in Calcutta. The, uh, Srila Prabhupada was there, there was one other elderly gentleman also there, and they were both getting sannyas. And so the mantras were going on. Well, Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj was there. You know Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj chanted 24 hours a day. That's all he did. Bhajans or japa, that's all he did, 24 hours a day. He was absorbed. And Prabhupada really loved him. They got along so nice. And Prabhupada would sit and talk in Bengali with him, and they would laugh and slap each other's knee. <laughs> it was like really, and devotees were looking, who is this person? You know, he's really intimate with Prabhupada. But Prabhupada loved him because he, he, he understood everything. And the holy name is everything. And he made it his life. And so he was there and he was chanting he was chanting Kirtan while the ceremony was going on. But this it appeared to be, and the priests that were conducting the ceremony felt that the kirtan was interfering with the chanting of the mantras for the yagya. So they said, Well, you know, Krishna Das Babaji, you you know, you chant really softly. And so he started to chant softly, and then Prabhupada went. He, Prabhupada said, chant loudly. <laughs> and so he did. And then he said after, he said, I knew he would be successful in spreading Krishna consciousness, because he had full faith in the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And that's what Prabhupada made this movement centered around that. And everything is based on this chanting. And this is our success. The more we chant, the more we spread the chanting, the more the atmosphere becomes purified, the more Krishna becomes pleased, and more people become Krishna conscious. This is our life, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha. Make japa and kirtan. Sometimes we think, well, you know, kirtan is so nice. But japa, my God, Mount Kilimanjaro. Trying to climb up it with a backpack, you know. <laughs> Seems like that sometimes. But actually, if we have that attitude, that's what it'll be like. If you look forward to your japa every day and develop this positive attitude, I want to chant. This is my favorite time of the day. I get to associate with Radha and Krishna in their names through the mercy of my spiritual master who has given me this process. When we start to appreciate and look forward to chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. It's a whole different experience. 
If you see it as a, a, a chore or a burden or a difficulty, it will become like that. But if you see it as a, a, a wonderful opportunity to connect with Krishna and to purify your consciousness, then it becomes, then you're, you're in the right mood for chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And that's important because the mood is the most important thing in the chanting. And so, uh, and sometimes we think, you know, well, you know, this chanting, yeah. Oh, I got so many things to do, and especially in the morning. <laughs> I got to chant in the morning, and I got so many things to do, and I have no time for chanting. I'll chant later. And then we call it late night japa program, right? It's called, that's the most miserable experience. Nine o'clock at night, and you got 12 rounds done, the last four takes and it's just as long as it took to do the first 12. <laughs> and you're, you're tired, you know, you're tucking into bed with one hand and you're chanting with the other hand. <laughs> you're looking at the clock, you're checking the counter beads to make sure they, they move. <laughs> and if they don't move, you shake them so they... <laughs> it's like... There's one particular story, and I heard this from Sachi Nandana Maharaj. It's a beautiful story. It's about, he was illustrating, this was at a Japa, this was at a Kirtan Mela in Goloka Dam. And the story goes like this. It may illustrate sometimes, because I've met devotees who want to give up their chanting and simply want to focus on Kirtan and uh, doing Seva but they don't want to give, they don't want to do their japa for some reason. And so there was one young man, and he was a disciple of one very powerful spiritual master. So he got to the point where he decided, well, that's it, no more japa, but I have to tell my spiritual master. So he went to his spiritual master, Guru Maharaj, you know, I'm finding it so difficult, I have no taste. I don't want to chant anymore. Can I just do service? The spiritual master said, all right, but before you, you know, you actually make that decision, I want to give you a little service to do. Okay, what is it? He said, you go down to the, down to the banks of the, the river, it's not far from here, and there's a crane there, and he stands on one leg, you know, the cranes, they stand on one leg. You go next to that crane, as close as you can get, without frightening the crane, and you say, Hare Krishna. Okay? <laughs> so he goes, gets near the crane, he says, Hare Krishna. And the crane goes, mm, falls over dead. <laughs> what happened? Goes back to his spiritual master, tells him what happened. He says, never mind. That's all right. I have another one. Now, there is a, a calf that's just been born in the barn. And she, the cow is there, the calf is there, baby calf. And uh, it's just born. I want you to go near the calf and chant Hare Krishna. So, he, all right, Guru's order. So he goes, gets near the calf and says, Hare Krishna. The calf rolls his eyes and dies. <laughs> Shocked. What's happening? Twice. Runs back to his spiritual master. Now he's in distress. Don't worry. It's okay. One, uh, but I have one more service for you. The king of this area, he's my disciple. And he's just had a son. A newborn son. The king's been waiting for a long time to have an heir to the throne. And finally, the son was born. The king is very happy. There's a little festival going on at the, uh, at the palace now. You go and you say that you've come on behalf of your spiritual master. Uh, you're his god brother and uh, you want to give some blessing to the child on behalf of me. Okay. So he goes. He's thinking, well, what's, what's going to happen? <laughs> anyway, he goes. King's there. He's smiling. The mother's there with the baby alone. And the king's giving out presents to all of the, you know, the palace members. He's really happy. Newborn baby. 
And then he, uh, he approaches the king. He says, I am your god brother. Oh, you've come? Yeah. Uh, Guru Maharaj sent me. Really? And he heard that you just had a well, baby boy and he wants to send his blessings. Oh, wonderful. And I'm here on behalf of him to give the blessing. Oh, okay. All right, the baby's there with the mother. You go. So he went and he gets near the baby and he says, Hare Krishna. Guess what happened? <laughs> baby, the baby rolls his eyes and dies. <laughs> When the king finds out, he is distressed, angry, bewildered, and all the bad symptoms you could possibly have in one package. He was, he was completely frustrated. And now he says to his guards, take this person away and give him a slow death. <laughs> now just when the guards are coming, the baby, all of a sudden, out of the body of a baby, a beautiful Gandhara with four arms goes up in the air, seen by everyone, and said, thank you very much. I was cursed to take three births. One is a crane, one is a calf, and one is the son of this king. Now I can go back to the spiritual world. <laughs> and so the king's a little bit pacified. <laughs> And he lets him go. He comes back to his Guru Maharaj. Maharaj he says, you still want to give up the chanting? No. <laughs> so that's a little antidote. But it has a nice meaning to it. What it means is that the power of the Holy Name is so... Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Chaito Darpanam Marjanam Baba Maha Dervagni Nirvapanam Shreya Kaiva Vichendrika Vitaranam Vidyavar Hujivana anandam budi vardhanam pratipardam purnam rita svardhanam that's that section there at every step one gets newer and newer realization of their relationship with krishna they're developing their spiritual body as we chant the holy names of the lord within the soul the spiritual body is starting to manifest it through the power of chanting the hari krishna mantra it's very powerful krishnism you can't really glorify the holy name enough. It's not possible. It's only, uh, there's only understatements. Nothing can be an over glorification. The holy name is so merciful and so powerful at the same time. When you find both mercy and power in the same, same ingredient, then you know it is the greatest of all gifts. So we might take it for granted. Oh yeah, we'll have to chant today. But if we have that attitude, then we will somehow or other not be able to properly get the mercy of the Holy Name. The enthusiasm, the eagerness, and the intention we give, and the arrangements we make in order to chant nicely, are all part of receiving the mercy of the Holy Name. And what is that mercy? Then you're free from all transcendental, you're free from all material anxiety, you're happy, and you're on your way back to the spiritual world. It's that simple. When Prabhupada was in 1977, towards his last few months before he departed the world, and he started to speak. He was speaking a lot to his devotees, just, just randomly. Whoever was in the room, Prabhupada was speaking. He was speaking a lot. There's 300 and some conversations that were recorded in Prabhupada's last year, which he wasn't even a full year. He was just talking about what he wanted for the future of our movement, what was going on now that he wanted to settle, so many things. Prabhupada was really moving fast. He knew soon he would be departing. So at one point he said, people can't understand philosophy. It's so difficult. We should just emphasize the holy name and prasadam. That is our mission. Of course, we do distribute books, and we that continue. But Prabhupada wanted to make a point that these are the two things that are very effective in this age of Kali: the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and distributing nice, very tasty, first-class prepared prasadam. It just captures people's minds and heart. They can't compare it to anything else. 
We were in Covent Gardens just last Friday for a kirtan program with, uh, with Dira Prashan, Sri Prahlad was there, and many devotees were there. And uh, I came, you know, and so, and it was, there was about 70 people came. It was like a packed house, big, and about th at least half of them came for the first time. For the first time, they had heard, and the whole program was they were all standing up, dancing, and singing loudly. Jai Sri Sri Radha Gokul Ananda Ki Jai Gornatai Ki Jai Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai, and. Uh, the chanting was so loud, and these were all, you know, new people. I thought, where am I? Am I in a temple? <laughs> and I was. The, these persons, many of them who came for the first time, were so enthusiastic to chant. And they were get, they got up and danced when, when we all started the dancing. And after they all came and started talking to the devotees, many of them, and started to appreciate what we were doing. So this, I mean, this is one example of how powerful this chanting is. People, for the first time, have a wonderful experience, and they can't forget it. And they'll be back, and they'll bring their friends. So this is chanting, spreading the holy name anywhere and everywhere. The holy name is very powerful. I'll give you an example of how the holy name works in a material way. <laughs> this is a personal story that happened to me in the year 1993, in uh, a place called Cincinnati, Ohio. I was the temple president of a preaching center. And this is in the middle of the farm belt. And many of the area is just full of farmland all around. It's like Ohio, Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Tennessee. These are, these are the states in that area. And most of them are all farm countries, mostly uh, you know, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles of farmland. So there was a drought. This was in July. In fact, it was right around this same time. It was a drought, and it hadn't rained for three months. And so there was a water shortage, and people were getting penalized if they used water for washing their cars, or for watering their lawns, or just wasting water. If they were caught, they would have to get, they would get fined for that. It was such a water shortage. And they were trying to seed the clouds and try, nothing was working. And the farmers' crops were burning up, and uh, people weren't getting enough water. It was really a crisis. So though I was invited to this one talk show, this one disc jockey. He was our accountant. He, was, he came to do our, some legal work for us. He was a lawyer and an accountant also. So he liked us, so he invited me to come on the program. So I came one time. And this was before the drought. And when I was, he was entering me, you know, you know, what is this Hare Krishna is about? What do you guys do? Why do you look so funny, you know? <laughs> What's this ponytail for, you know? <laughs> all of the major questions they ask. So I, I answered all those questions. Then he said, well, you know, I, we have commercials regularly. And we usually break the station with a jingle. So I want you to chant Hare Krishna, and that'll be the jingle for breaking the stations. I said, fine. So he would get on and say, all right, folks, we'll be back in a few minutes. And then he would play the Hare Krishna jingle, which I chanted. And I did, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare We'll, back, we'll be back, folks. <laughs> he would break the... So the second time, I, I, he had found that I was connected to the New Vrindavan community. So he said, can you bring some of the devotees from there? 
we'd like to maybe even bring the, the leader. And I said, yeah. So the leader at the time was Kirtananda Swami. So he came along with a couple of devotees. And this was during the drought, so I was on for the second time. And the show had covered 38 states. It was a three-hour talk show. started at 9 a.m. in the morning till noon. And he would have, you know, different people on. So now he, he, he really liked us, so he had me back the second time. So we were there, and we were... And then he started to say, you know, there's a drought. It hasn't rained in three months, and there's a, it's becoming a crisis. Can you guys make it rain? <laughs> and Kirtananda Swami said, yes, we can make it rain. He almost fell off his chair. He said, you know, there's millions of people listening to this show. You guys are going to be known as a false prophets. <laughs> Your reputation will be finished. No, Kirtananda Swami said, no, we can make it around. How are you going to do that? Well, we're going to chant Hare Krishna, but there's a condition. Everyone in Radio Land has to chant with us. And if everybody out there chants with us, you'll get the results. So... So he got real fired up, you know. He was just like one of these uppity guys, you know. He said, all right, the Swami's going to make it rain. Come on, chant with the Swami. So he's really getting into it, and he's going all like this. So we started chanting, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hari. So we went on for a few minutes and he's really pumping the audience. Come on, chant with the Swami. <laughs> chant with the Swami. And so, you know. So we, we chanted for a few minutes, then we stopped and continued the show. That was around 9.30. 11.30, they get a call from a weather reporter because they have these guys that drive around in cars looking at the sky to see what's the weather. So this one... Person he calls in, his name was Bill. He said, Hey, Bill, there's some clouds up here. And that was about 50 miles away. <laughs> so the show ended at noon. And at 2 30, there was a downpour. It lasted for three days. It rained for three full days, solid. I mean, it was a pouring rain. It wasn't just a rain. We, we thought many people must have chanted. <laughs> and, uh, the disc jockey was so happy that he called us. He said, I want to give you guys an award. I know the mayor of the city. So he went to see the mayor of the city, told us, told him what happened, how the rain came. The mayor was so pleased that they gave us an honorary award. They, they gave us this big key. You know, it's like a key about this side made out of styrofoam, which means you, we give you the key to the city. It's the honorary award. You know? <laughs> So the Hare Krishna's got the key to the city in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> so he went just to show how, how pleased they were. Of course, we don't use the holy name in order to improve the material situation. But sometimes we do it in order to preach Krishna consciousness. So we use that as an opportunity to get everyone to chant. And it worked nicely. Prabhupada tells when in 1898, when he was just about a year and a half old, there was a huge plague in, um, in Calcutta. And the plague it was, a, I don't know what type of plague, I'm not sure, but it was killing people randomly. People were dying in the streets, people were dying in their homes. It was a huge, and nothing was working to counteract the plague. So when Babaji he decided to have Harinam Sankirtan. And so he began Kirtan and started going through the houses. Prabhupada describes. He was going, they were going in and out of people's houses and just chanting Hari. He said, after some time, the plague was gone. <laughs> but then he says, you know, we shouldn't do that, though. But still, there was, it, there was an emergency at that time. When people were really dying, so something had to be done. So what does that say? Right now people are saying there's so many viruses and so many, you know, diseases, Omicron 1, Omicron 1 and a half, Omicron 2 and a half, Omicron 3 and a half, Omicron 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and a half. So only so many diseases. Oh, we don't know if they're there or not, but we're getting reports. So what will counteract this? 
Harinam Sankirtan. That's the only. If devotees all around the world do Harinam Sankirtan, everything will change. The whole world will change immediately. That, we have that, Lord Chaitanya demonstrated that. When the Kazi broke the drums and was going to punish the devotees for chanting, Lord Chaitanya got so angry. And then he said, we're going to have Harinam Sankirtan and we're going to march onto the Kazi's house. And when Lord Chaitanya organized that, millions of people, demigods, people from all over the universe came to take part in that Harinam Sankirtan. And that's described when Lord Chaitanya was chanting and dancing. That, that kirtan was tumultuous. It was heard throughout the entire universe. Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya were dancing in the front. Mukunda and Dwaita Charya were singing. And many of the other associates for Lord Chaitanya were playing instruments. And people were following. It was in the evening time. And the instruction was light torches. So they got these sticks and they put these rags on and they dipped them in oil and lit them. And there were so many torches lit that the entire atmosphere looked like daytime, although it was night. <laughs> it was com completely bright. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he just ma marched onto the house of the Kazi. Of course, there's a beautiful discussion between the, ka the Kazi when he's saw what was happening, he sent out his men to, to check it out. And then they were going, and as soon as they would get close to the kirtan, these were, you know, Islamic guys, and they had the beards. As soon as their beards would catch on fire. <laughs> and some of them, they would go to stop the kirtan, and they would wind up being, they started to chant. And people were leaving their houses and leaving their homes open, and the thieves were thinking, wow, Here's a picnic, everybody's house is open. So the thieves were going. But then again, when they heard the chanting, they forgot they were thieves. <laughs> they started to chant with everybody else. Said, Lord Shaitanya, is, and he's still here. <laughs> so this Sankirtan movement can change the whole world to Krishna consciousness. It has that power. And so if we do it regularly, each, every temple, not regularly, continuously, the whole world will completely change. That's why Prabhupada said, he said it a couple of times, this Krishna consciousness movement will save the world in its darkest hour. He said that. It's getting dark. <laughs> it is getting dark. So when I mean, Prabhupada predicted, he said in 1973, he said in 50 years, this civilization will be finished. He said that in 1973. Watch it, it's happening. And so the Sankirtan movement is the panacea to save the world, bring people back to human life, and to purify and to push back the influence of the demoniac society. This is the power right there. And Prabhupada said, for our livelihood, Establish these farm communities. He said, have Sankirtan over everywhere and live in farm communities. Grow, 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 your, grow food, keep cows, and make your own cloth. Learn medicine by learning herbs. Become self-sufficiency, self-sufficient. That way we don't have to depend on this materialistic society. And Prabhupada gave a, a complete formula, both for the purification of the world and to establish a social system. Build these farm communities. You have it here, but you need to put it, build it more. More agriculture is needed. Because when you have agriculture, you have everything. Because that's the basis. When we have food, and everything is there. When you, if you have food, you can take care of cows. If you, don't have, if you don't have food, you can't really take care of cows. You have to buy things in order to take care of cows. But when you grow your own food, Prabhupada said the devotees will eat, and whatever is left you can give to the animals, and they will be sufficiently fed. Prabhupada gave us a whole vision. He could see the future. Prabhupada was a mystic. He knew past, present, and future. It says that a great soul. He knows Trikala Gyan. He can understand past, present, and future. So he was warning us and telling us, build these farm communities and send, just preach 
Harinam everywhere. The whole world would change. He was just listening to a lecture the other day. Prabhupada said, if we go out and do Harinam everywhere around the world, the whole world will be by Kunta. And they can't stop it. They can't stop the Hare Krishna movement. It's not possible because when devotees are chanting and dancing, they're completely protected by Krishna, by the sound of Krishna's name. Because Krishna's name gives complete protection at the same time purification. Very powerful. So this is our this is our mission as a society to somehow or other bring Krishna consciousness to this difficult situation. And it's becoming more and more obvious as time goes on. But we don't have to wait for that. And we know that this is the mercy. Become strong in your own japa, chet, your japa. Just like I mentioned to some people say, well, how can I improve my java? You get that question all the time. I say, chant 16 rounds before you do anything and then begin your day. If you do that, you'll see a qualitative difference in your whole spiritual life. Significant. There was one devotee, <clears throat> I won't mention his name, he lives here, and his son was also a devotee. And this devotee was getting angry all the time. <laughs> and his, his son was telling him, you know, Dad, why do you get angry so easy? <laughs> and then he thought, all right. So he told his father, why don't you just chant 16 rounds before you do anything? And the father at first didn't go for it, but then he decided, all right. And after doing that for a few weeks and a couple months after that, the anger was completely gone. Completely gone. He was a whole different person. The Holy Name is so powerful and so merciful and so available. So we have to take advantage of this by chanting more, distributing more. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the Gundicha temple, he was cleaning the temple to, prior to the Rathiyatra ceremony. He had, was surrounded by all his devotees. And they were washing the temple. And they had buckets of water and mops and cleaning devices and just cleansing the temple. And nobody spoke. If anybody wanted to say anything to anyone, they would say, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and then if you wanted someone to do something, you would say, Hare Krishna. If you wanted a bucket, you'd say, Hare Krishna. If you wanted anything, and everybody could understand what everyone was saying simply by saying, Hare Krishna. <laughs> So this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching, yeah, the holy name is all you need. And there's a beautiful prayer. I forgot the name of it. It's, it's, a, it's composed by an anonymous person. The holy name is all that be. Anybody remember that prayer? The holy name is everything. The holy name, the, the holy name of Sri Hari, is all that be. Hmm? eva kevalam, yeah. Ah, satyam satyam, yeah. Namastakam. Well, that Ram Namastakam is Rupa Goswami. This is another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The holy name of Sri Hari is all that be. Beautiful, beautiful prayer. It illustrates that everything is in the holy name. Everything is there. When we know that, it <clears throat> doesn't mean we don't do our service. Because Prabhupada also says, <clears throat> if you're just chanting and you're not doing anything else, then your chanting will take some time to develop. And those who, can, who are on the highest spiritual platform can just chant. And that's all they can do. And then they're fixed. But we have to come up to that standard. Therefore, we have to worship the deity. We have to engage in cooking, cleaning, various types of activities, hearing and re hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. In other words, all the activities of devotional tourists are supportive of the chanting of the holy name. And as we perfect these other activities, they give us support and they give us Enthusiasm for the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it's connected. <clears throat> but when one becomes fixed in devotional service, then the holy name is the only service. Just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs>
Prabhupada would say, just chant Hare Krishna. That's all. <laughs> One devotee asked Prabhupada a question. Prabhupada said, just chant Hare Krishna and you'll get the answer. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. So this uh, we can't end, we can't overestimate the glories of chanting the Hare Krishna and the mercy, the power, the availability, and the yeah the mercy is that you know anyone and anyone the the scriptures are just full of statements. chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigars Mukta Sudya Nitya Bhuktamukt was that. Sura Nitya Mukta Binna Twama Nami Nami No Nami Nami No Nama Nami Nama is the name Nami is he who is named So the name and he who is named is Abhinna means they're the same No difference So chanting the Hare Krishna mantra me. Someone asked Prabhupada <clears throat> How do you feel when you chant the Hare Krishna mantra? Prabhupada oh, said I feel fearless makes you fearless. I remember I was in Delhi. I told this story yesterday on my Zoom call. I was in Delhi. <clears throat> I remember the date because I thought I was going to die on this date. <laughs> it was February 19th, no, February 21st, 2019. And I had a program in another part of Delhi, which was 55 kilometers away. It was in the evening time, so the the temple where I was supposed to go sent a driver to pick me up and take me. So if you've been to Delhi, you know how they drive there? Wild. Whoa. It's like, Bombay is like really nice compared to Delhi. <laughs> Whoa. It's like, you know, it's like you're on a racetrack or something. <laughs> Fast and furious. <laughs> And uh, so they sent me a driver to take me to this place. It was in Rohini Dam, 55 kilometers away. So the driver came, looked like a nice boy, but he couldn't drive. <laughs> and he was driving so slow. And I'm telling it, you can't drive like that in Delhi. You'll die. And he, he just, like, ignored me. <laughs> Anything I said to try to get him to drive faster, he wouldn't do it. He was just, cars were going, shoom, 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 I think. And then when we went into this one tunnel, it was like curvy, and he, he, he took all three lanes to go on, and I was thinking, oh, no, this is it. We're finished. You know, and I was thinking... And then I remember what Prabhupada said. Prabhupada said, when I, when I get into anxiety, I chant loudly. <laughs> so I just started to kind of like scream the holy name. <laughs> a low scream, but it was still a scream. I was screaming, and I was just chanting as loud as I could. And I was thinking maybe he'd get the message, but it didn't change. He's still driving the same way. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but as I was chanting, I got to the point where I forgot about his driving. And I just thought, hey, this is nice. <laughs> and I just chanted like that. And I was actually a little disappointed when we arrived because the holy name was so nice. I, I was thinking, I want to keep chanting. <clears throat> and it took us. We left at 6.15. We got there at 10.30, 55 kilometers to go from four hours and 15 minutes to go 55 kilometers. That's how slow he was driving. <laughs> and when I got there, all the people that were waiting for me were still there. I started my class at 10.30, finished at midnight. <laughs> I was supposed to be there at 9.30. And, uh, well, maybe even not. Yeah, and then... It was just, it was something that I never forgot. <laughs> that, that just chant the holy names as loud as I could, and I, I was feeling like, yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no, all the fear went, all the anxiety went. My driver got a little purified, I guess. <laughs> but when they asked me about going back, I said, give me a different driver. 
<laughs> I said, you know, I'm not going back with him. <laughs> I might not make it. <laughs> so yeah, this is an example of the holy name. It just completely overshadowed all the difficulties that was apparently happening. So, but the holy name is so powerful. If we absorb ourselves in chanting, then we'll find that this is the process. Mm -hmm. And then everything else becomes nice. Your relationship, some, uh, again, this one very senior devotee in our movement, he was a Naranjan Swami, he told me this. He was preaching in the Ukraine. And so, <clears throat> and he was preaching also in Russia. That was his area. So he was telling me that people were coming to me with personal problems. And one after another they were coming. <clears throat> and so there were many. So every day he was talking to people, trying to help them with their personal problems. And this was, was continuous. So he was thinking, I'm going to get every class I give for the next year, I'm going to chant, I'm going to speak only on the holy name. That's all. And so he did it. <clears throat> for one year, every class he gave, he spoke only on the holy name. And then he told me, after one year, more than 50% of the problems were gone. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem is we don't have enough faith or take enough time to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. So as we chant, we develop that faith. As we develop that faith, we become more and more eager to chant. And the actual process, as Srila Prabhupada has said, chant 24 hours a day. And it's, it's possible. You can do it if you practice more and more and more. Because the whole process centers around Krishna's statement. Um, what is that verse in the Bhagavad Gita? 1865. Manmana bhava mad bhakto mam yuji mam namaskuru. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer your homage to me. Surely you will come to me. I promise you this because you're my friend. So the, what always think of, here's the easiest way to always think of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to speak more on this, but it's getting a little late in time. Any comments or questions? Anyone? Any doubts? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Srimad Maharaj, so much for uh, amazing just reminding us uh, the having faith in the Holy Name. And I'm just thinking for us who doesn't have like such a firm faith in it, uh, but Srila Prabhupada had it and Srila Prabhupada was constantly saying, just go and do Harinams, chant it. Uh, and when we are, don't have it, uh, how can we, how can we um, uh, approach this pure faith of the holy name? Just chant. Just chant. But associate with devotees who have a taste for chanting. <coughs> your association will be your inspiration for chanting. So the more you associate with devotees who have a taste for chanting, who are eager to chant, you'll develop that same mood. Yeah. Like that. Uh, one more thing. Uh, I was just read in uh, Madhya Lila, chapter 11, one, 176 verse, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying to Haridas Thakur to sit uh, on solitary place and chant. In the comments, uh, Shri Prabhupada was mentioning that uh, going to the secluded place and chanting only cannot be for the neophytes. It can only be for the advanced devotees that have uh, purified and then they were laboriously working. They got purified, they were preaching, and then afterwards they got the permission to go and chant uh, the holy right. name in secluded place. So how to understand this in regarding of us trying to chant 24 hours? Well, there's a saying in Bengal, Hate Koro Kaje Muki Bolohori. Hate Koro Kaji, work with your hands, Mukhi Bolo Hari, chant the name of the of Hari. So whatever you're doing, you can chant. You're cooking, you can chant. You're arguing with your wife or husband, you can chant. <laughs> you 
can chant anytime, anywhere. Whatever you're doing, chant. And I mean, sometimes we have to talk to people. But we can also, you know, talk to people and then after that continue to chant. Practice. If you practice chanting, it becomes something that you can start to do more naturally and easily. Just practice it, that's all. And if you can't chant out loud, just ch chant inside, that's all. Like that. You can chant inside your mind also. Chant, that's all. That's our whole movement. It's centered around the holy name. That's it. And that's the power. <laughs> Prabhupada said, when you're actually chanting, this is a statement, exact statement, if you're actually chanting, you'll say, 16 rounds, why not 16,000 rounds? In other words, you're, you're tasting. When you get that taste, then the taste will continue to perpetuate you more in that chanting. So it's available. You get the taste, two things you get the taste, but through serving the Vaishnavas and chanting the holy name. If you, if you make Vaishnav savor your focus and chant the holy names, you'll develop a taste for that chanting more and more. And then Lord Chaitanya adds a third one, Jivadoya. That means Give Krishna consciousness to others. Mm -hmm. And that's a natural mm, uh, progression. If you're chanting and you're serving Vaishnavas, you'll also be eager to give this mercy to others. Happens automatically. Mm. Okay. Goloki to play Madonna. Harinam Sankirtan coming from the spiritual world. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.